Do you know the deepest core negative belief you have about yourself or the world? Like truly the core belief? Because once we know that real core belief, we can then begin to work with it and change it. So often people think their negative beliefs are actually their rules and assumptions they have developed about the world and about themselves that come from that deep-seated belief, but they're not fully aware of that deep-seated belief. So today I'm going to use a technique called the downward arrow technique in cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, and help explain it in a way that you can work with it to really get to that core. And then some of my other videos talk about actually transforming that core belief, and I will link those here. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I've been a psychotherapist for 20 years using CBT and EMDR to help my clients live more joyful lives. And I also weave in some Buddhist philosophy, some mindfulness, meditation techniques, and life coaching skills to truly help people transform their lives. And I've brought that all together in this channel, Awaken Joy, on YouTube to help more people. So if you support what I'm doing, please subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, please do give it a like. And if you think it might be helpful for somebody else, please share. Okay, let's get into the topic. I'm going to use three real life situations today to illustrate the downward arrow technique, but first let me give you a brief sense of what it is. So the downward arrow technique, which is also called the laddering technique in CBT, but I don't really like that term because we are going down, we're going deeper and deeper and deeper. And yes, you can use a ladder to climb down, but I always think of ladders as going up. So anyway, the downward arrow technique in CBT is to keep asking yourself a series of questions that get to the deeper and deeper feelings and beliefs underneath upsetting situations. And those questions are things like, so if that's true, what does it mean about you? Or if, if that were to happen, whatever you're projecting into the future, if that were to happen, what does that mean? Other questions could be, well, why does that bother me? Or if that is true, what does it suggest? What am I worried that might mean? And we just keep going with those kinds of questions until we get to some cores. So let me give you a couple of examples. So the first example is somebody named Lisa. She is in a panic about not getting into a graduate program. So in exploring this, I asked her, okay, so let's say you don't get into a graduate program. What does that mean? And she said, well, I don't really know, but she thought about it a bit and she's like, well, my family will look down on me. My parents will be disappointed. Overall, the whole family will look down on me. I said, okay, so let's say your parents are disappointed and they all look down on you. Well, what does that mean? And she answered, well, it means I'm a failure. Okay, so if you're a failure, let's say that's true. What if that were to be true? And she paused because she hadn't really thought about it in that way. And then eventually she came up with, well, I'll I'll be isolated. I'll be alone. No one will want to be with me. So then I asked, well, if you're isolated and alone and nobody wants to be with you, what does that mean? And she said, well, then I'd be worthless. I'd be a worthless human being if I'm all by myself and not doing anything. So the core belief is I'm worthless. Yeah. Now, some people might have stopped at I'm a failure, right? Like some people might say, okay, well, I'm a failure is a core belief. And it might be for some people, but it's good to keep going. It's really good to keep going until you really hit it and you're like, wow, that's really the belief I have under that because then you can consider, so does that mean everybody in the world who doesn't have a graduate degree is worthless? No, <laughs> there's plenty of us who don't have graduate degrees who are living fulfilling lives and helping others and doing meaningful things in the world. So Getting to that core really helps to bring it to light and expose the fallacies. And you can also see that in getting to that core, we discovered a number of Lisa's rules and assumptions about the world. So the I'm a failure is kind of a rule and assumption, like I'm going to fail is sort of an assumption about the world. And then if I fail, I'm going to be alone is an assumption about the world. If I don't achieve then people won't like me. They won't want to be with me if I'm not achieving something. These are all rules and assumptions that come out of that core belief of I'm worthless. 
other rules and assumptions that one might discover in going through this might be that the world is very judgmental, that I have to do what my parents want me to do, right? That if I don't do what my parents want me to do, like there's something really wrong with me. So I know that identifying these core beliefs and identifying these negative views about yourself and the world is no fun. This is not, this is not fun stuff. But it's like the core. It's the root of the problem. So once you know the root, you can begin to fix it. So I'm going to give you a different example. Actually, I'm actually going to start from the same premise of I'm afraid I won't get into this graduate school, but I'm going to use a completely different person. Joe, same premise, same fear. I'm not going to get into graduate school. So in talking to Joe, okay, what's the problem here? What's the problem if you don't get into graduate school? Okay, well, then I will be stuck in the job that I'm in forever. Like, that's the problem. Okay, so if you're stuck in that job forever, what does that mean? Well, that means that I'm going to be unhappy my whole life. I'm just, I, I know it. I hate this job. I'm just, I'm going to be unhappy if I'm stuck in this job forever. So let's say you're unhappy forever. What, what does that mean? What does that say about you? Oh my God, I, I couldn't stand it. I couldn't stand to be unhappy forever. Okay, so if you can't stand being unhappy forever, what does that mean about you? Well, I guess it means I'm not, I'm not able to make good choices. I'm not able to make positive changes in my life. Okay, so if you're not able to make positive changes in your life, what does that mean about you? Well, I guess if I can't make positive changes in my life, it means that I'm I'm powerless, I'm ineffective, I'm weak. Okay, so are those some core beliefs? Is that the core belief, I'm weak? Or does it go below I'm weak to I'm powerless? And then Joe was able to go, yeah, I'm powerless, I'm powerless. And then you can test these core beliefs by doing the same exercise with different situations in your life. And if it all comes back to the same belief or a very similar belief, that's your core belief. Now, the work for Joe with I'm powerless might be to recognize one where that came from because there may have been points in his life where he was truly powerless. We often, as kids, are powerless to change our situations, and that can become ingrained as a belief. But now that we're adults, we're no longer powerless over everything, but we sure are powerless over some things. So how do we begin to differentiate what we're powerless over and what we're not and then get to some sense of I'm competent enough, I have enough agency. So hopefully you're beginning to see how this can work. So I know that a lot of counselors and therapists watch my videos, which is great. I'm really happy because I hear from people that they get something out of the video that they can then go use in their work. And that is, makes me just so happy that they can then take this information and share it out. Yet the main people I'm speaking to in my videos are the people who are struggling, who can use some tools often in conjunction with therapy or other healing techniques, but use some tools that can really make a change in their lives. So I just want to throw that out there because this is a technique that a lot of counselors will use, and it's also a self-help technique, right? But not all of us can get to where we need to go with self-help. So I'm going to share one more example of the downward arrow technique. Before I do that, I just want to say that if you are struggling and you get a sense that you can't really solve what's going on in here with self-help techniques, please reach out for help. And I do hear from people around the world who are looking for help and would like to have therapy. So I did become an affiliate with betterhelp.com. They operate in 140 different countries, in 40 different languages, and I'm including a link below this video that will give you 10% off your first month. This channel does earn a commission if you use this link, so it's very supportive for the work that I'm doing here. So let's come to the third example. And this is someone I'm gonna call Tara. And Tara goes into a panic every time she has conflict with her partner. So in exploring this, I had Tara bring to mind a recent situation where she had conflict with her partner and to really think about like what was the worst piece of it. And for her, the worst piece of it was that at some point she totally lost her temper, got extremely angry, a little vicious, a little irrational, and she knows it. So once she was able to identify like what was really the worst part of it, she realized the worst part of it is actually how she feels after the conflict when she loses it that way. 
So I asked her, what does it mean about you that you lose it that way? And she's like, well, I'm a horrible person. I'm just a horrible person. Okay, so if you're a horrible person, what does that mean about you? Well, it means it means I shouldn't be that way. I shouldn't do that. Okay, so if you shouldn't do that, what does that say about you? She couldn't quite get to an answer with that one. So we went to another. I took a slightly different approach. So if you shouldn't do that and you do do that, what do you worry that that means? And she was able to say, well, it means I'm bad. I'm just bad. I just, I feel like I'm just a bad person. Like I don't know how to be good. Okay, so you're bad. So if you're bad, what does that mean? She's like, well, if I'm bad, people are going to leave me. And so if people leave you, what does that mean? Like, what are you most afraid that that might mean? And she said, I'm unlovable. At core, she truly felt unlovable. So I sort of asked her between those two, because those are two fairly basic assumptions. I'm bad and I'm unlovable. Which one felt worse? And she said, well, they both feel really bad, but probably unlovable is a little bit deeper. But she's somebody who actually has two core beliefs and they're connected, right? Because I'm bad, I'm unlovable. So again, there, once those are identified, you can then begin to question those beliefs. So I imagine many of you are out there thinking like, yeah, well, if she loses her temper and she says vicious things, then she's bad. And I would say, no, she's not bad. Her behavior is not the best, right? So learning to change that behavior. But we can't change that behavior if we believe that at core we're bad. So going through a process with Tara of asking her, well, what are her good qualities, right? And if you were truly bad, would you care? Like you feel badly about your behavior because it doesn't match your sense of self. It goes against some of your values and beliefs which indicate that you're actually a good person who hasn't learned emotional regulation techniques, right? And then also, how long has your partner been with you? And does he say he loves you? And he does, and it's been a while. So he knows you're a good person underneath that. He just knows you lose it and he'd like you not to lose it anymore. But then you can like take action, right? Like if you're coming from a core belief of I'm bad and I'm unlovable and it's inevitable, well, there is no reason to try. So I'm hoping these examples have helped you. I'm going to post to the questions again, as well as like just a little diagram of how you can take your thought, ask the question, write it again. You can just map this out in your journal and just keep going down and down to get to the core. So I truly hope this is worthwhile for you. Let me know in the comments what you think, any questions you might have. I do have a free PDF on transforming your negative core beliefs, which once they're identified, there are tools and techniques to begin to transform them. So feel free to download that. You will find all the links in the notes below this video. And again, if you've enjoyed this, please give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you next time.